So, everybody's going to know when you're going to take your cardboard. oyster mushrooms. Now the caps, we're going to save for cooking, all right? So this is just water that the cardboard's been soaked yeah, in, or water? water. Yeah. You just take it, and then you're just going to lay it in. Are there any straightforward to stay away from? Like, if you don't know what the ink is based on? If you don't know what it is, don't use it. Um, typically, uh, these these uh, dividers or something like that, and you know, they have no ink on them, are made of rice, They're like rice hull. They're really sandpapery. Mm -hmm. So did you see what I did? <laughs> All right. Roll it up your little burrito. All right. Then you're gonna take that and you're gonna stick it in here. God, that was so hard. It was yeah. It was very complicated. This has enough air in it, but uh, I would honestly say it's a lot of a burrito um, compared to the little coffee thing. You might want to poke a little hole or even just let it just open the bag once a day. All right. I like to store this in the fridge for a few days, for a few weeks, and I'll tell you why. It's going to lower the metabolism. Uh, you can leave this out. You can try it, or make two of them. Or you can split this up, and make two uh, when you get home. The one at room temperature, the little bits of mushrooms are going to rot very quickly because of the bacteria. Okay. If you put this in the fridge, the mycelium sticks to the cardboard, and it makes what? Do you remember what they make? Heat. Heat. So they, it, it makes a little bit of heat, and then it starts to jump off onto the cardboard, and then you'll open it up, and then you will just peel off the little pieces of tissue and get rid of it. Then you bring it back to room temperature. It's eating the cardboard now. Two, four or five days in the fridge. Uh, longer than that. Maybe like two weeks. What do you do with the piece of cardboard? You have to do it again? You, you could try that. Yeah, you could try that. If it's still alive, it might do that. But, but you really have it on cardboard. Uh, and I've, I've done this with uh, a lot of different mushrooms. But it works great for oyster mushrooms, bluets, kingstropharia. I found my first kingstropharia about seven, five years ago. Okay? And I took it to a lecture. And I showed everybody, because I was proud. I showed everybody, hey, this is my kingstropharia. Isn't it beautiful? And I, I turned off the lights, I did my lecture. And then my basket came back and it was gone. Somebody stole my kingstropharia. My first one, and and I was really depressed and pissed off. It was a weird emotion. And then uh, I went home and I looked inside my basket and there was just like this tiny, tiny little pieces of wood chips with a little bit of mycelium on it. And I put it in the cardboard. I rolled it up. I put it in the fridge and I forgot about it for like a month or two. And then I'm cleaning out my lab fridge. I look in the back and I see it and I'm like, the hell is this? Oh, it's my kingstropharia. And I unroll it. And it had radiated out the size of about of a dime. And I took my dental pick and transferred it to a Patri plate, and it went just like that. And then that Patri plate went, just kept going and going and going. So all the Kingster Ferry that I have all over the U.S. and East Coast came from one tiny little filament on one piece of a wood chip. That's what you've got to learn. Remember the ember idea. You know, just take care of that mycelium. All right, so everybody come up. Uh, chop up a few, there's a couple knives you can spread out around this and uh, put back on both sides, is that fair? And then uh, I'll put some mushrooms on the other side.